Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 3rd of September. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the excellent GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we'll try in a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That gets us into the second half of September. And I'll get right back for you in a moment, just to say that the first video release today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. And we've also released the detailed European outlook as well. So check out those two bits if you'd like to do that. Like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Got to put on around 22, 23 subscribers to get ourselves to... That's 16.7k, so you could give, give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe. That would be amazing. Thank you so much, everybody, um, for doing that for Gaz Weather Vids. Right, we're going to start off with the Tonka Atlantic. We've got various interest areas. So uh, we've got two at yellow X's, one there and uh, one there. So uh, back to one is December Spring with a 10% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days, a 50% chance of cyclone formation in the next seven days, we've also got Disturbance 2 with a 20% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days, 40% chance of cyclone formation in the next seven days. And then we've got Disturbance 1, this red X just here, with a 70% chance of cyclone formation in the next two and seven days. With that one, they're saying uh, Central Subtropical Atlantic Remnants of Emily. Oh, interesting. An area of low pressure located more than 1,000 miles east southeast of Bermuda, the remnants of former tropical storm Emily, continues to produce a large but elongated area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Upper level winds are generally conducive for development today, and this system is likely to regenerate into a tropical storm over the next couple of days as the system moves northwards over the subtropical central Atlantic. By this weekend, the system is anticipated to merge with a frontal boundary north of the Gulf Stream. Uh, and that simply is the end of it. So we may well see the re-emergence, the reanimation, the rebirth of Emily. Wow, wow, wow. And then we've also, I'm so sorry, but we've also got Tropical Storm Franklin. Uh, which is giving maximum same winds of 50 mile per hour with a minimum set pressure of 1,001 millibars. Franklin is moving northwards at 13 miles per hour. This is predicted to become a hurricane over the weekend. Currently, position of Tropical Storm Franklin is just there. Uh, forecast predicted to become a hurricane at some point over the uh, weekend as moving northwards to the uh, west of the Bermuda Highlands. <coughs> Excuse me. So just clicking on discussion, we can see this is almost getting to category three status if the forecast is correct at 120 miles per hour. It's predicted to be giving maximum sustained winds of 110 miles per hour which is a very high end category two borderline category three um now this could be our first major hurricane of the season definitely one to watch there with franklin we'll keep you updated central temperature is uh, still sitting at uh, 17 degrees 17.0 1.2 degrees above 6.99 average at visual to yesterday to the 23rd of August. I expect that to start ticking down from the weekend onwards. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks in London today. So the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for London. Starting off above average at the moment, but the upper air temperature will be coming down over the bank holiday weekend and through the closing days of August. Into the first week of September, the upper air temperatures are hovering close to average. So, um, probably temperature comes up a little bit through the first week of September. No sign really of anything that hot, but I wanted to hot outliers appearing, but just quite close to average with the upper air temperatures into the first week of September. Precipitation wise, some showery conditions come over the uh, next few days, but also a fair amount of dry weather, and that carries on through the first week of September with a chance of further showery weather at times. Temperature anomalies from the 24th of August, 1st September are around to a little bit below average, actually. 
Precipitation anomalies from the 24th of August, 1st September. They're coming out drier than normal, particularly for Ireland, Wales and England. The latest wind from that from EarthRollSchool.net shows that we've got an area of low pressure just to the west of Scotland today. Uh, however, we've still got high pressure down to the south of the country too. Right, let's start going for chart days. When we sell the UK, make your road looking big night on Sunday. A trough is moving through the country and possibly bringing some shower additions. Another trough for Bank Holiday Monday. Then a bit of a ridge builds in uh, Monday through Tuesday. That's quickly pushed aside by the next trough moving in as we go through to the middle of next week. And uh, up to the final day of August, Thursday, 31st of August. Looking generally rather mixed, I think, with further low pressure both to the north. And also to the west. Icon, again, pushing little troughs of low pressure through over Bank Holiday Weekend. A bit of more significant low getting closer to us, actually, by the middle of next week. That could bring some quite heavy rain into some parts of the country. That particularly affecting Ireland, England and Wales. And that uh, area of low pressure sticking around closer to the country up to Thursday, the 31st of August, as far as we get to with ICOM. The GFS Midnight Run again pushing me shower and trust through over Bank Holiday Weekend. Won't be a washout Bank Holiday, but will be plenty of dry weather between the showers and the balance of showery rain. Uh, into the middle of next week, low pressure be perhaps becoming a little bit more uh, definitive across the country. So showers and or long spells of rain keeping the unsettled thing going up to day 10 as well with further low pressure areas close to us in the more extended range higher pressure tries building to our northeast but we never completely get rid of the influence from low pressure especially to the south and southwest this low over this day for example would be threatening more showers maybe thunderstorms uh there by the end of gfs midnight which gets us to the night of september the gfs 6 m once more pushing me showery trust through and then a more definitive area of low pressure sinking into the country around Tuesday, Wednesday next week. Further areas of low pressure for a while, but a change comes into the beginning of September. That's day 9, so Saturday, 2nd of September, as higher pressure starts to take over. And that takes into uh, a warmer and drier first weekend of September. That's day 10, Sunday the 3rd, under quite a big area of high pressure. That starts drifting northwards and more low pressure begins to push up from the south just beyond that. So we're very quickly back to rather unsettled, maybe quite wet conditions just beyond um, day 10. And as we get to the end of the uh, GFS 6, the low pressure starts mooching its way in from off the Atlantic. So two or three drier, warmer days there, just at the very opening of September. And then we're back into relatively unsettled and showering conditions once more. If you're enjoying the video, please can you like, share and subscribe, which is so much everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Worthies and ask them to subscribe too. It's amazing, it's incredible. We thank you so much everybody for doing that for us. GM, once again, bringing Sherry Trosses in from off the Atlantic through the weekend and into the beginning of next week for a more significant area of low pressure perhaps moves in around middle of next week, bringing further spells of wet weather with it. Beyond day sort of seven to days eight, nine, ten, higher pressure start taking over across the country and to our north, so things begin to turn a little bit drier and uh, warmer then. And then the ECM looks like that. Once more with the showery troughs moving in across the country over back holiday weekend, but will be dry and uh, bright intervals in between. Uh, low pressure then drops into the country Tuesday through to Wednesday, looking quite unsettled for the middle part of next week. And beyond that, to day 10, a ridge trying to build into the south southwest, but got more low pressure downstream in the Atlantic. So any ridge there is going to be flattened off by that area of uh, low, by that area of low, relatively quickly, I think. Um, so could be shaving up for a showery first week to September, albeit with a couple of dry, dry days right at the opening. This is a precipitation forecast based on an ECM run from Tometio.com. Showery bursts uh, continuing. Oh, through the next few days into the bank holiday weekend. Um, yeah, so with some dry weather around, but showery conditions always there or thereabouts as well. So not a wash out of the bank holiday, but you know, will be rain at times or showers at times anyway. Um, and by day 10, we've got more wet weather heading in from off the Atlantic. These are the options on the table within the ECM on top of day 4, day 10. The Atlantic Met Office gets us to be 3rd of September. 12 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure reaching to the west and north. Low pressure 
down towards France. Winds are coming up from a southerly uh, direction. So, so it should be warm, but below near Biscay could bring some heavy showers into South Tan. We have low pressure in off the Atlantic. Obviously, that's going to be very unsettled there. Uh, another tan with low pressure to south southwest, high pressure to the north northeast, and uh, we bring up wind from a southerly direction with that. Eight with high pressure over and to the west of the country, mostly dry with that. Six with high pressure again to the north and west, that should bring quite a bit of dry weather. And five with high pressure centered over and to the north. A range of options. So the uncertainty of the beginning of September continues. Will it be high pressure? Will it be low pressure? Uh, will it be a mix of, of maybe both uh, both types? Uh, in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It gets to the 8th of September, 12 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the south and the east. Lower pressure is out in the Atlantic. Uh, it should be relatively uh, warm with that, particularly in the south. Could be a little bit more change up in north. 10 with high pressure right over the top of the country, but 9 with low pressure right over the top of the country. Uh, 8 with high pressure over and to the north and uh, another eight with high pressure to the west low pressure to the east wind coming in from the northeast and then uh four with high pressure generally to our north and winds in from an easterly direction with that one again a range of options probably more involving high pressure than low pressure but the placement is uh is very um very uncertain there so this is all very very typical of having a, a, a lot of uh, chocolate developments in the Atlantic, what effect they have, you know, on the wider setup is what I assume is causing the uncertainty here. And as I say, it is all very, very typical for the month of September, which is always um, a month of relatively poor model reliability, unless we don't get any trouble storms or whatnot <laughs> in the Atlantic. Which sometimes we don't, but uh, at the moment we are going through a more active phase. Right, CFS me to uh, finding piece of 500 millibar height and I'll break it down into a weekly periods. And the uh, first week period takes from the 24th of August to the 30th, with low pressure over and to the east of the country. It's rather showery in the weekend. Week two is going to be the 31st of August, 6th of September. Low pressures to the south. High pressure is to the north and west. Winds coming in from an easterly direction. Wettest weather will be in the south there. Week 3 is going to be the 7th to the 13th of September. Higher pressure begin to ridge up from the southwest. That, that should start uh, being a little bit drier. And then we get through to week 4, which will be the 14th to 20th of September. High pressure takes over. And uh, so becoming drier as we progress through September after a relatively showering and quite unsettled start. But of course, we shall see about that. And well, if you've enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, subscribe, and if you show you everyone doing that, why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Web. So thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Around 20, 23 subscribers are going to get us to 16.7k. You could give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe. It would be amazing and incredible. And uh, we thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Right, I'll just tell you what's coming up tomorrow. We're going to have 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We have Jeremy Friday. We'll have the East Sam Day 42 day forecast, as well as a 10 to 14 day busy day to come on the channel tomorrow. Please keep checking back for more for uh, today's videos, though, and for this video. That's all for now. And thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.